Hey everybody, welcome back. My guest tonight is one of those mop top lads from Liverpool who called themselves the Beatles. His new EP, Zoom In, comes out this Friday. Please welcome to a late show, Sir Ringo Starr. Hello, Ringo. Hello. Hey, hi, Stephen. Great to be here. Nice to see you. We are zooming in, you know. Yeah, we are. We are. This is that we'll get to it in just a sec, but here's here's the album right there. Zoom in. It's yeah. an honor to zoom in with you, especially I love I love the psychedelic halo you've given yourself. I know I painted that for the show. Oh, very nice. Thank you very much. Thanks. You know, very few guests go to the effort of actually painting their own backdrop. I also painted these guys behind me. Those and fellas? The guitar is from my son. So I thought I'll get that in. Now, I, I've always been a great admirer that you, you respond to almost every question at some point on every press line, any time someone takes a photo of you, you, you give the peace and the love. Peace and yeah. love, everybody. And every, and love them, yeah. every time you mean it, you, you haven't grown jaded to the promise of peace. <laughs> Some people have. Some people yeah, from yeah. who were like who first ran into the peace and love message in the 1960s gave up on it. How did you hold on to the peace and the love, Ringo? It just became natural for for greeting peace and love, brother. You know, it's, uh, it it was embedded in the 60s, of course. I didn't invent it, and um, and I love the 60s. I mean, what a change went on in everybody's life. Uh, thanks to Timothy Leary, of course. But um, I, I don't know. It's just that I was on tour. You know, I hadn't been out live for years. And it just became like, hey, peace and love, everybody. And it just sort of went from there. Then we have my birthday, uh, special, you know, 7th of July. And we have a peace and love moment at noon. And so I just use it any way I can because I truly believe in peace and love. Here's something sort of related to peace and love. This is a famous photograph of you done by Richard Avedon. I don't know if you can see it yeah. on your end, but this is you with the dove. And yeah. I, I love it so much that when Annie Leibovitz shot me for Vanity Fair this Christmas, we use that as an inspiration. Yeah, great. There you, you go. see, it's spreading around. Yeah. I'm all, you're spreading the word, brother. Well, you're spreading it around. You've infected me with the love of peace and love, Ringo. Yeah, great. Now, you've got... Um, you know, the, the the message of the peace and love, which I know is sincere for you, but how do you keep the peace and the love going during this unbelievably bleak year we just went through? Well, uh, yeah, I had a few downer days, I can tell you that. In February, I went shopping for clothes for the, you know, the, the two tours I was going to do last year, and it's still hanging up on news. But, you know, when the dates came for the tour I'd cancel it. I want to play, I want to play live, you know, I want to be with the audience. And, you know, that was not going to happen. And we had so little knowledge of what it was going to be like. In March, I canceled the tour and I said, don't worry, next year I'm going to do the exact same tour, the same venues, everything. And of course, that's not going to happen. So I won't be going on tour till next year. You know. Have you got Have you got the shot? Do you mind me asking? Have you gotten? I've had both of them. Thank you. Wow. Well, you could go on tour. No one can go well, with you, but you could go on tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to be there. With people in masks, no connection, and right. you know, six feet apart. It's like last night at the Grammys. I went peace and love. Nothing. <laughs> well. You managed to get a lot done anyway, so let's let's put this back up I again. So the new album is the EP out this Friday. Zoom in. What's it like to make an album? How, what's it like to collaborate on music during the pandemic? Were you guys just trading musical files, or were you guys together you know, playing? You know, half and half is files, and uh, knowing the musicians I wanted, they would get tested. I would get tested before the jabs, and we wear masks. And uh, we'd hold our breath, take the mask off and do a photo <laughs> and then put them on again. But um, everyone who comes here is pretty serious about, you know, taking care. Well, a lot of the people who are on this EP with you were also in Ringo's All Stars. And yeah. over, over 30 years, you once called uh, the, the All Star Review the greatest 1-800 band in rock history. What's a 1-800 band? 
Well, you used to buy records on, off the TV, a 1-800 number. Oh, sure, sure. You know, so that's what it was about. So I thought, you know, because it was such a mixed bag. I mean, everybody on stage has been, was in a different band. And we did all the hits. So we were the best 1-800 live band. An unbelievable. Even the first lineup back in 1989, Dr. Yeah. John, Billy Preston, Levon Helm, Rick Danko, Clarence Clemens, Joe Walsh, Nils Lofgren, and Sessions drummer Jim Keltner. Jim Keltner. How did it feel to get off the drum kit and and be the lead singer with that cast of, of friends? Well, easy. I had two drummers. I mean, I was so insecure. There were three drummers in the first band. <laughs> it was you, Levon Helm, and Jim and Keltner. And Jim Keltner. Yeah. yeah, so we were like three lined up. And I did run down, and Jim Keltner would take care of what it is, and Levon would join in. And, you know, the thing with what has been always the rule with the all-star bands, you know, we're not there to be tortured, let's have fun. I will do my best for you, and I expect you to do your best for me, do your best for him. You know, we support each other. No one, you know, sort of staff bleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, there's a book now. Ringo Rocks, 30 Years of the All-Stars, 89 to 2019, available now. Is it true, because I got a little bird told me that in 89, you guys, of course, had monitors, which are standard now, but the Beatles didn't have monitors. You couldn't hear yourself no. playing. What was that like for you to play live and, and be able to hear yourself for the first time in front of a huge crowd? Great. No, okay. great, but I, I don't really need them. And we played Colora Red Rocks in Colorado sometime late 90s, say. And uh, on the mixing board, the monitor piece exploded. So there were no monitors. And to a man, everyone in the band said, well, we can't go on. I said, what? What? You can't go on? We're going on. And we went on. We did a great show. And... At, to a man that came back saying, that was great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone gets used to the stuff now. Yeah. I, you know, I came from clubs and weddings playing. You had just played and you heard the other band. But with the Beatles, it was crazy because at the beginning, of course, we heard ourselves and we could play. And as the, so the audience got bigger yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bigger and nothing like it, we were the first band in stadiums. I had to, and, and they, we loved it. They just screamed from the minute we went on to the minute we went off. And sometimes it was really, really loud. So I'd have to just watch the motion of, you know, John, he had a certain way of bouncing and Paul was tapping and, you know, to see where we were half the time. And if they were, I never heard the, the notes, they would go, woo! <laughs> oh, that song, that's where we are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my my sisters, two of my sisters were teenagers in 1965, and they saw you guys on your last uh, appearance in D.C., in Washington, yeah. D.C., and yeah. they said, I mean, they were very happy to be there, but they didn't hear a word. All no. they heard was everybody else screaming, and I imagine it must yeah. have been the same for you. That seemed to me that's what it was. Yes. And it, we went to the gig, and it's going to be that, and that's okay. Ringo, we have to take a quick break, but stick around. When we come back, I'll ask Ringo about his memories of their first appearance here at the Ed Sullivan. 